That's a good shot. First runs of the Test Series to Clayton Lambert. He doesn't really have to run. Crashed it through extra cover to finish the first over at four for no wicket. Playing a shot like that in the first over, really his front foot didn't get anywhere near the pitch of the ball and he just followed through. Fortunately, timed it perfectly. But really, that's uh, almost a shot of nerves, I would feel. Rhodes, here's a chance. Oh. Now, will umpire Shepherd refer it? No. He's decided not to. In a moment, we'll see why. Yes, he hasn't taken the ball cleanly, Adam Bacher. And just a nervous, nervous call, in fact. Lambert a bit late to react. That's in the air, but uh, away for four. So the second over finishes as the first over did with a boundary. West Indies, nine for no wicket. Better stride with the right foot. The right foot's got a long way to go. It's way outside leg stump because of the open stance. Chase just kept the fielder interested for a long, long time. And Hansi Kronje eventually had to pulled away for four more. So all three of the overs bowled in this series so far have finished in an identical manner. 17 for no wicket, West That's Indies. Hard. Here's that last ball again. Just a little bit short and unforgiving, this pitch. Not a lot of pace in it, not today. I think it might get a little quicker tomorrow and Saturday but that just ended up as a long hop nearly ended up on his backside as well with four runs was the result but from Clayton Lambert and Pollock strikes well no real movement of the feet here again and going for that shot over the covers pays the penalty and you just got the feeling that if someone could move the ball slightly away from Lambert with that open stance he'd have him in trouble There was that feeling, wasn't there, all the time that uh, a wicket might just fall purely. A yes! Struck away, wide of mid on. That's a good shot, but it did just indicate why Philo Wallace gets out LBW. Four out of five test innings. That's how he's been. Just a bit of width, and Wallace couldn't uh, resist it, but uh, not a convincing stroke. In the air, leaning back. That's beautifully bowled. The ball alone yet, which is <laughs> which normally happens in the first half hour of a test match. Out through his defence. The first defensive shot that Philo Wallace has played. And the stump flies out of the ground. West Indies 24 for two. Chant the ball. 31 test matches, more experience. Averaging 45. That's a pretty good test average. Anybody averaging over 40 is doing pretty well over, over that many matches. Good shot from Lara. That'll be four. Donald got quite excited for a moment. Maybe the uh, slow motion replay will show us why. Well, just a little bit over pitched and wide, but sometimes those are the most dangerous deliveries early on in a batsman's innings. He thinks his eyes light up. And sometimes it can induce the edge. But he hits it superbly well. Lovely shot. It was a lack of feet movement that uh, Alan Donald got excited about. Pulled away this time. It isn't a great deal of pace in this pitch. 
It's not often that uh, Alan Donald gets pulled wide of mid on. This is through the covers, four runs, just slightly over pitched that time from Pollock and Brian Lara seizing on it very quickly and hitting it just in front of square for four. Well, this is poetry, isn't it? And that length was just off, as Trevor has said. Beautiful balance, that high, flourishing backlift. He just times it away to the square cover boundary. Loves that shot. That's a classic Brian Lara. This one's through, though, between some Cox and uh, John T. Rhodes and is four it was just a little too short and a little too wide the width is what allowed uh, shanda paul to swing the arm. wanted and look at that it almost looks the way he plays there the bat's too heavy for him such as the wristiness in the shot bold him bold laura sean pollock strikes for the third time on this first morning and the West Indies are 41 for three, and the big fish, Brian Lara, the West Indian captain, is gone, clean bowled by Pollock. What a sensational delivery, and Lara is out for 11. That perfect length, and it just moved enough to beat the great man. Look how close he comes into the stumps. The ball, the seam perfect. He should have gone forward more positively, didn't, got an inside edge, nicked it onto the stumps, and away he goes. And South Africa is now right on top. Carl Hooper comes to the wicket. A man whose average is perhaps a little bit lower than his ability, but he's played 74 matches, and he has been one who has saved the West Indies on numerous occasions. Look at that top score, 178 not out, although it was six years ago. Oh, and that's in the air, and it was dropped. It would have been a brilliant catch if he'd have been able to hold on to it. He just got a right hand to it. And that's the second one, in fact, that he's dropped off his own bowling. Philo Wallace was dropped second ball when he hit it back very, very hard indeed to Pollock. But you see how difficult it is for Pollock in his follow-through to change direction and uh, to get enough hand on that for it to stick. This will go down to third man for four. Very attacking field with three slips uh, and a gully. No third man. So once it gets uh, between the slips and the gully fielder, it's going to run down for four. Well played by Carl Hooper. You can see the soft hands that he's got. And uh, he's learnt that by a lot of cricket in England where you need that sort of a shot. Again, he runs us down between third slip and gully once more because there's no third man it goes to the boundary and so the end of the 13th over the 50 comes up on the board 51 for three and once again Sean de Paul moving across in front of his stumps it's it away just backward a square for a couple and moves the total along to 53 for three Oopsie, there's an appeal as well. And uh, Carl Hooper, well, he probably would have got a, a silver medal. Well, so many runs are scored in that area in Test cricket simply because third man really is a luxury. If you want to be attacking, you're going to have to have the three slips, and there's just no one, uh, as a captain, you'd love to have 12 men in this in this situation well he's not given much away Pollock and even that oh he's crashed that but Rhodes well it, it did go straight to him but he hit it very hard and you'll see if you you notice where John T. Rhodes actually picks this up he's more or less pretty much in line with Gully so he's very close to the bat and that cuts down the angle nothing wrong with that shot straight through mid off over pitched and uh, beautifully played four runs to Carl Hooper 
Well, I suppose the only place not to bowl if, to someone who's got a hamstring is uh, is full. But he, he does play a textbook style beautifully off the middle of the bat. Well, I mean, he just continues to break records, Alan Donald. Whoa. Well, he's been punished through mid-wicket. The outfield is still a little soggy. The ball gets there. Well, this delivery wasn't that short, uh, Gerald, and he plays a full shot almost off the front foot. And I just wonder if he isn't really... No, I don't think it's out of character almost for Hooper to play a shot like that. Nothing wrong with the result, though. He's gone for that one as well, and it'll go to the square leg boundary. And another big over for the West Indies as they go to 71 for 3 and 18. It's a cracking shot from Carl Hooper, and that'll go to the boundary. Fellow Wallace, the runner, gets a little exercise, but uh, Donald gets punished again. Well, Carl Hooper has almost decided that with his injured hamstring, he's just going to play his shots, and it's so far it's working tremendously for him. And what do they say about a wounded animal? Sometimes at the most dangerous. <laughs> Big appeal. Well, umpire Shepherd isn't uh, frightened to give people out on the front foot. We've seen that before. Let's have a look. And this is one of David Tabruga's best strengths. He nips them back, he nips them away, he does a little bit of both, and that really wasn't a bad shot. The bat hit the pad, but it didn't hit the ball first. So uh, a very valid shot from David Tabruga and the people behind the wickets. Oh, it's a tremendous stop. I think that was a bump ball all the way. They have Donald threw his hands in the air, which confused me a little. <laughs> There's a typical West Indian stroke, the back foot drive from a full delivery and four. Well, the outfield immaculate and uh, no real difficulty for the ball getting there. 84 for three after 24. Well stopped. A bit of jocularity from Hansi Cronier. Little dummy tackle at the at the runner, but only the second run of uh, of David Tabruga, and this is of a slight misfield from Adam Bacher, who once again is called into action. There's Hansi giving him the little dummy. Oh, that's nicely bowled. Now, did he, did he completely commit himself to playing that, or did he just get that bat away at the last minute? Well, this, I would guess, is the perfect line and length to a man like Chandapur. He, he goes that little shuffle, as you can see, it's good, and he played it. There's no debate he played it that. He tried to pull it away at the end, but miles too late. Well... That was a loose stroke. I can't really uh, say that was a good shot. It might, no, it won't get to the boundary. Donald will haul it in. Well, that was a slog. Well, there's a bit of confusion because of the runner. It's often the case when uh, the run isn't obvious and you've got a runner the batsman himself almost wants to start for the run and uh, it causes all sorts of confusion. Good stop uh, by Hansi Cronier at mid-on. That's smashed away on the offside. I uh, think we'll have the beating of John T. Rhodes and does go to the boundary rope. This has got away through mid-wicket. And I think he's timed it well enough for it to go to the boundary, indeed.
And that takes perfect timing, but also it takes a good wicket. One good boundary in that over. And a wide, well, no ball rather, 104 for three. Brilliant, John T. Rhodes. Interesting that uh, the batsman, Carl Hooper, has gone and had a word with his runner, Philo Wallace. This is well driven past some Cox and uh, the mid off has gone a good deal squarer because of some Cox being in there and again able to get three runs. Yeah. Through the gap behind point, John T. Rhodes beaten for a change, but he will get there as usual. Mark Boucher does the tidying up. Bit of width and runs immediately in his decision to go around the wicket. Well, th this is Chanderpool's strength. He's a very patient young man. He's only 24 years old. Oh, a bold. Well, yet another occasion in which he beats a batsman well set. Just slightly more angled that one. He came from a, almost a sidearm delivery. Oh. We'll get run through mid on in the most uh, unconventional fashion. It's going to be four. Well, it was unconventional. It was almost a slog. We saw a, a hooper stroke like that earlier, and it was almost as though the frustration is getting to these with. Oh, he's got it through. Rhodes might and does. Brilliant. Absolutely superb. Well supported by Jacques Callas, who uh, manages to pick it up and throw it in. Three runs come from that, uh, sorry, two runs come from the shot which angled away. He plays that shot so nicely, and uh, one wonders whether it wouldn't be more sensible to have a third man anyway. Look at that brilliant effort. Lovely little stroke, this see he loves that push through the mid-wicket area he's done it once before and got a very good four this time only two Donald around the wicket oh well he'll get four runs and that is bad luck for Alan Donald well you know that anything short and wide the West Indies are going to take a, a go at and uh, they've done it on uh, several occasions today and they've got runs in this area third man there he goes flashes it away it was in the air for a period of time but no third man and one begins to wonder whether Hansi should not consider putting a man back there oh he's put him down now who is it I don't believe it's John T. Rhodes now how crucial could this be well, he's such a good player of spin, and uh, off spin in particular. And I think Jonty will be kicking himself now. Out, caught Colin and it slipped. Donald makes the breakthrough. Having had an indifferent time with the ball to date, he makes what might just be a vital breakthrough, and no one more relieved than John T. Rhodes because it's Hooper that's gone and Rhodes had put him down in the previous over so not a costly miss well the difference here is that Alan Donald is suddenly just struck on a rhythm and he's getting a little bit of shape he swings it away gets the movement away and trying to drive on the up and he gets the edge 
Must be said, that was a poor shot from Hooper, trying to hit the ball on the up. Just as uh, David Richardson was describing, it's not a good shot to play, especially if the ball is leaving you. But Hooper, brave innings of 44, hampered with an injury, finally goes. Court Cullen and Bold Donald, West Indies now, 132. Everyone in Johannesburg thinks that's it's out, but it isn't. Kirsten the fielder. It's the first time Gary Kirsten's been on camera today. Pulled away by Williams. There is a man back there. He's not right back, Adam Bacher. He's sort of 35 metres from the bat. <laughs> That's beautifully stroked through the covers, and that'll take Chanderpaul to his 50 and the first of the series. <laughs> Applause from his teammates and well-deserved because it's been workmanlike. He's watched the ball closely, and he's hit some good shots in between some dogged defence. And that's the second drive that he's played off the back foot, real Calypso, traditional Calypso style. Late he hits the ball. It's very full. He lets it arrive under his eyes. His weight almost back, but coming forward as he stroked the ball. Swept that away. Fine. That's a long chase for Pollock. I beg your pardon. It's the river. And that's nicely stroked away. I don't know whether it'll get to the boundary. It seems to be almost gaining on the fielder now. Cronier hauls it in. So just two to Williams. And Williams comes down the wicket, goes over the top. He didn't quite get hold of it. The ball comes up short of the boundary. They're able to get two runs. But showing some aggressive intent there. Beat the first man, but not uh, the mid-off who's deeper. Nice-looking cover drive there. Wideish mid-off can get around and cut it off in quite spectacular style. Alan Donald, but they do get a single. he goes for the shot again this time he brings it off brilliant fielding once more by Jonty Rhodes at backward point <laughs> Ooh, well he once again fell for the temptation well if he survives this over he will get a blast when he gets back into the dressing room if he doesn't, he better turn and walk the other way. Because this is the last over before T. He's playing some getting out shots there. There's no way he could have got hold of that. That was too high for him to go for the hook shot. Intact at 157 for four. It's nicely played, nicely times. Rhodes in pursuit. He'll have to get his little slide in, he does. Just the two. That's nicely timed, and that will go for four. It's a good shot from Williams. It's a good shot from Williams. The on drive is always so pleasing to watch, just as that was. directed and it ends up going straight to Mudon. Beautiful length and a beautiful line Pat Simcox has bowled to the right handers when he has had that opportunity. Well, a pretty good length yeah, and Pat. line to the left hander as well but that's just perfect. 
swept away and one wonders whether that deep backward square leg isn't too fine it's beautifully played shot but i just get the feeling that is that alan donald down that shot makes him look a little bit fine but it's very well hit often you don't get that much bat on the sweep shot especially when there's a bit of turn it's not that easy to hit it as square as that flight it driven four Flurrier runs here from Stuart Williams. Well, this really is a lovely shot. Pat Simcox beaten hit for the boundary. And double bluff gives it a bit of air. But Williams doesn't commit himself too soon. He's able to get out to the pitch. And he places it beautifully. Yeah, it's his prowess off the back foot. Nothing wrong with that shot. Nothing wrong with that bit of fielding either. It's Gary Kirsten on camera again. He must have been very upset when I retired because he was the only I was the only person he could beat in a 50 meter sprint. He's now about comfortably the slowest in the team. In the air and out to Brooker strikes for the first time in Test cricket. The whole team run to congratulate him and does he deserve it? He's bowled beautifully. Williams goes. Well, he's batted so well, and now you can realize maybe why he only does average 24, 25. He's played well up to 30, and then gets out and near battle to average um, over 30 if you're going to get out often in the 30s or 40s. But you got one ball left. Oh! Yeah, just he better beat him for pace. He was just too late on that. 177 for five. Big shot for LBW here, umpire Cyril Mitchley walks away. Was there bat there again? We'll have to have a close look at that. With the naked eye, it looked a very good shot. Oh, that looked stone dead unless there, unless there was a nick. 178 for five. Well, there was bat there for sure, but was it pad first and then bat? As nicely played into the covers. That'll be two. Shandapur moves to 58. Nicely driven by Shandapur. Won't go to the boundary. Mid off is after it. They've got two thoughts of a third. But it won't be. Seeds another one here as it's pushed out into the covers. A little bit short there and uh, packed away nicely by Shandapur. Get two runs. Away on the onside. Oh, and a direct hit here. And what is umpire Dave Shepard? He's going to ask Rudy Kutzen to have a look at this. And uh, what is going to be the reaction of the South African players? Think, it's difficult to tell whether they think they've got their man. I think it's going to be a desperately close call, this one. Oh, extremely good pick up and throw there. So fast, wasn't it? And it was almost as though Jake was slowed down. And uh, it is really, really close. Good fielding by Jacques Callas. Certainly worth another another look and see it from the other angle. Now look at that. Bounces beautifully. Well, you see, it's just before it hits the stump there and the bat is on the line and the batsman's safe. That's four runs. Finds the gap nicely between Gully and John T. Rhodes at backward point. And he starts with a fiery delivery. 
to Ridley Jacobs. OBW must be fine delivery there from Alan Donald. An inspired bowling change from Hansi Cronier and uh, Alan Donald at last has trapped uh, Chanderpaul. He's the one the South Africans wanted. A very well played 74 from the little West Indian, but uh, palpably LBW there to Alan Donald. And it was a, a pretty fast delivery. Extremely fast ball this, and it seemed to keep a little bit low. He went back as he's done so often today, and this time he didn't get the bat in the road. The ball hitting him halfway up the pad, and away he goes. He spent a long time there, 271 minutes, 210 balls, hit those 10 beautiful fours, but in the end, he has been dismissed, and South Africa are back on top. One. This is Nixon McLean. He certainly felt that. Nixon McLean had a great start on this tour. 25, only five uh, test matches. And a uh, high score of 11. Still a long way to go. And we get some runs here straight down the ground. To Brugger doing the chasing. Brings the 200 up after 73 overs. He's gone for the drive and he's got it away down towards deep mid off and gets four runs. Won't uh, be totally discouraged, Pat Simcox. No, but his intentions are clear. It's up there. It's a full swing of the bat. Well, yes. there's appeal. Not out. Well, my immediate reaction was that's out. But the batsman immediately pointed to his forearm. I'm not sure he's allowed to do that. And I'm afraid I think that is out. Or should have been. Certainly deflection there upwards, isn't it? And uh, Donald was convinced. Umpire Shepherd not. Have a look from this angle. Hmm. Could have been the forearm. That I don't know about, though. <laughs> well, he's got away with it. Well, you never know. That angle now it looks as if he was right. Hmm. Well, he might have wanted to walk that last one now, he, he might think. Yes! No. It's beautifully bold, though. Great bowling. Who would have thought after those two previous deliveries that the next one would be a slower ball? Very similar action, very difficult to pick, and he was right through on the shot. Only really by fortune that it didn't carry to middle beautifully bold and hit that one and got it away well that is cruel luck for Alan Donald of knowing which end to throw his back was turned now he relies on somebody shouting it telling him bowlers end or wherever but Nixon McLean's got long legs and he covered the ground pretty quickly Short. And some exercise for Rhodes. He's hit that in the air, but safe. I died! Uh, they were looking for a third, but some clever fielding by Cronier, who almost slows down as he gets to the ball but then whips in the throw very quickly prevents the third oopsie 
They were just all at sea against the short pitch. Mm. Oh, that is a beautiful delivery. And uh, not the prettiest shot in the world from Nixon McLean. I think is obviously in a bit of pain and upset. Yes, clearly unsettled by Alan Donald's aggressive approach towards him. It's not so easy when you're a big guy sometimes to duck and get under those short pitch deliveries. Come off the pad. Two leg buys. Catch? No. But optimistic, but he's not dealing with this uh, line of attack at all well. Oh, he's got something on that. <laughs> and it's going to go very fine. slides off the outside half of the bat and it's going to bring him four runs pulled away more important runs and that's a good chase from Donald tremendous chase good stuff He's bowled 18 overs today, but uh, hasn't dulled his enthusiasm with that incredible effort. It's nicely timed. Rhodes will chase. And I think we'll get there with the slide. Yes. Another good fielding effort. Cullis. Pulled away to mid on and out. Well, I was looking in the wrong direction for a moment. I was looking to mid wicket, but it went to mid on. Cranier takes the catch one handed, and Cullis gets his name on the scoreboard. Well, wasn't that casual? When Kansi Cranier started to move backwards towards the ball, I got the feeling he thought it was way over his head. And then he just put up that right hand. Even the cameraman got a little bit fooled. <laughs> but he puts up a right hand and away goes Jacobs for 14. Um, he spent a long time there and he really performed a useful function. Be the newcomer who just arrived today, Raw Lewis. There's a hook shot straight over the keeper for very frustrating for anybody who bowls a bouncer. Very satisfying for a tail ender who feels that it's actually really not his job to have them flying around his nose. And then walking forward. Slower ball. That means that Alan Donald had signaled it. The second day's play. Here's the first ball of the second day of this first test match. And it's stroked nicely enough down to a deepish mid-off. And this really is quite interesting. Again, the same shot, same fielder. Tony Cozier, are you a bit surprised to see some Cox bowling first up? Good morning, Trevor, and uh, good morning to everyone. In fact, uh, I think everyone would be surprised uh, that Pat Simcox gets a ball which is just 10 overs old for the first uh, over of the day when you've got Pollock and uh, Donald in your side. A slip, a forward short leg, and a short mid-wicket are the attacking fieldsmen, as it were. It's the short mid-wicket that does the fielding there. And 
Simcox starts with the maiden, first over of the day. Being the main strike bowler, of course, Alan Donald has uh, most often the right to pick which side he would want to bowl from, and he prefers to bowl from the golf course end, so to get him down that end, this is in the air and might be a catch, or it might... Oh, he's dropped it! Gary Kirsten down there at fine leg, and he...